Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'll show you how you can use Terraform to set up an AWS EC2 instance. This video assumes that you already have Terraform as well as the AWS command line interface set up on your PC. If not, I've put a video link in the description below of how you can do that. So now I'm just going to log into the AWS console and show you my Northern Virginia region. As you can see, I'm in the Northern Virginia region, which is also US East 1. I'm just going to select EC2 here so that we go to the EC2 dashboard. As you can see here, running instances is zero. I'm just going to select that so that you can see that there is no stopped instance. As you can see, I don't have an instance in the Northern Virginia region. I showed you this so that you could verify that Terraform will actually create an AWS EC2 instance when we use it. Now let's switch on to write some Terraform code. We will write the code in the HashiCorp configuration language, commonly known as HCL. Let's start by creating a directory or a folder where we will store our Terraform files. So mine I'm going to store them in F, demos, and then I'm going to call the directory Terraform EC2. After you create the folder, you can use any text editor or IDE of your choice. I'm going to be using IntelliJ, so I'm just going to start it up. Once it starts up, I'm going to use it to open the folder that I just created. So I'm just going to click on open here and then select the folder that I just created, which is an F then demos then Terraform EC2. Click on OK to open the empty folder. I'm just going to close the tip of the day and then right click on the folder Terraform EC2 and then select new file. We're going to create a .tf file. I'm going to call mine AWS EC2 .tf. Terraform files are called .tf files. As you can see, our AWS-EC2.tf file has been created. Now the first thing that we have to do is to configure a provider. Terraform is cloud agnostic and it supports many different cloud providers. So you need to tell it which provider you are working with. In this instance, it is AWS. So we're going to write provider AWS, then open and close brackets. And inside the brackets, I'm going to write region is equals to US East 1. This basically tells Terraform that whatever it is that you're going to do, whatever infrastructure that you're going to provision, provision it in the US East 1 region. As I mentioned before, US East 1 is the Northern Virginia region. You might have noticed that I've got syntax highlighting autocomplete and suggestions. This is because I've installed a plugin to extend my IntelliJ to support Terraform code. I'm just going to show you the plugin. So it's files, settings, and then plugins. This is the Terraform plugin that I've installed on my IntelliJ IDE. So for each type of provider, there are many different kinds of resources that you can create, such as servers, databases, and load balancers. The general syntax for creating a resource in Terraform is as follows. Resource, provider, type, name, and then configuration. The provider is the name of the provider, for example, AWS. Type is the type of resource to create in that provider. For example, you use instance for an EC2 instance in AWS. Name is an identifier you can use throughout the Terraform code to refer to this resource, for example, my underscore EC2. It should be in the snakecase convention, that is, lowercase words separated by underscores. Configuration are the different options you can set for that particular resource. For example, for an EC2 instance, configuration includes things like the AMI and the instance type. For an S3 bucket, it includes things like the bucket name and encryption. So for our EC2 instance, we'll put the resource as follows. resource AWS instance and the name we're going to give it Terraform EC2 example. Now we need to get an AMI which is available in the Northern Virginia region. AMI stands for Amazon Machine Image and this is basically the operating system that will load on our EC2 instance. So just go back to the EC2 console dashboard and then click on AMIs. After it loads, 
Click on the drop down here where it says Own by Me and select Public Images. Type in AMI 062F7 and then press Enter to filter by that. And then just scroll down to the details here and copy this AMI ID. Go back to your code and then paste it here. Now let's move on to the instance type. The instance type is the type of EC2 instance to run. Each type of EC2 instance provides a different amount of CPU, memory, disk space, and networking capacity. We will use a t2.micro, which is sufficient for our needs. So I'm just going to type here t2.micro. A t2.micro has one virtual CPU and one gigabyte of memory, and most importantly, it is part of the AWS free tier. To give our EC2 instance a name in AWS, we have to use tags with the name attribute. I've chosen the name as Terraform EC2. So just come here, type tags is equal to open brackets, name, and we said we chose Terraform EC2. Terraform EC2. With this, we are ready to use Terraform to provision and deploy our EC2 instance in AWS. To run this, open the terminal or command prompt in the folder which is our aws-ec2.tf file, and then run the Terraform init command. For me, my terminal is already open, and as you can see here, I'm already in the folder which is our .tf file. Terraform does not come with a code for any of the providers. For example, the AWS provider, Azure provider, Google Cloud provider, etc. So when you're first starting out to use Terraform, you need to run the Terraform init to tell Terraform to scan the code, figure out which of the providers you are using, and then download the code for them. By default, the provider code will be downloaded into a .terraform folder. You sit here once we run the init command. You also see a few other uses for the init command and the .terraform folder in later videos. For now, just keep it at the back of your head that you need to run init at any time you start with new Terraform code. And also that it's safe to run init multiple times because the command is end important. Now let's run our Terraform init command. I'm just gonna expand this here so that you can see better. Type Terraform init. Press enter to run the command. As you can see, it says initializing the backend and then checking the provider plugins. We are using AWS and here it's downloading the AWS provider. It does take a bit of a time if it's the first time. I'll run it again when it's done. As you can see, it says Terraform has been successfully initialized. Like I just mentioned, if I run it again, you see it won't take a bit of time because it will find the provider that it is looking for. It will scan my code and see that I'm using the AWS provider and then it will look into the .terraform folder to see if we have already downloaded that provider. If I just refresh here, you can see we now have a .terraform folder and this is where the provider is. So if I expand here, then here, and then here, you can see here, that's where the AWS provider has been downloaded to. And that's where Terraform picks it up from. That's why when I ran Terraform Mini the second time, it didn't take time because it identified that I already have the provider. Now that we have the provider code downloaded, we can run the Terraform plan command. So I'm just going to type CLS to clear the screen and then type Terraform plan. The plan command lets you see what Terraform will do before actually making any changes to your infrastructure. The output of the plan command will either have a plus sign, negative sign, or a tilde sign. Anything with a plus sign will be created. Anything with a minus sign will be deleted. And anything with a tilde sign will be modified in place. Now press enter to run the Terraform plan. As you can see at the bottom here, it's saying the plan is 1 to add, 0 to change, and 0 to destroy. We just want to create an EC2 instance, so this is correct. If you scroll up, you can see that we are just creating one AWS EC2 instance. But then again, you can ask me, what about all these other items that also have a plus sign? These are the things that go with an EC2 instance. For example, you've got the EBS block device, which is just like the hard drive of the EC2 machine. To actually create the instance, we need to run the Terraform apply command. So I'm just gonna scroll down to the bottom, type CLS to clear again, and then type Terraform apply. Press enter to run it. You notice that the apply command will show the same plan output, but it asks you to confirm whether you actually want to proceed with this plan. As you can see, the Terraform apply output is the same as the Terraform plan output. But because this is a command that actually deploys the infrastructure, it asks you for confirmation. You can see here it's saying, do you want to perform these actions? And only yes will be accepted to approve. So I'm going to type yes and press enter. This will deploy my EC2 instance in AWS. It also takes a bit of time, 
but when it's done, it will give us a confirmation that it was successful as well as a tally of what was created, what was modified, and what was destroyed. As you can see, this is the confirmation. Apply complete, resources, one added, zero changed, zero destroyed. There you go, congrats, you've just used Terraform to deploy an EC2 instance in your AWS account. To verify this, head over to the EC2 console dashboard and confirm that it is there. So from this AMI's list page, just click instances and we'll see our instances. As you can see, we have our AWS instance running. We gave it the name Terraform EC2 and it's there. Just a quick one. Please tell me in the comments below what you think will happen if I decided to change the name from Terraform EC2 to just Terraform in my Terraform code and run Terraform apply again. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to use Terraform to deploy an EC2 instance with user data. We will then use this user data to deploy a single web server. Please support this channel by subscribing and liking this video. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.